Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In few of my video series, we are seeing about the tutorials which are focused on the vector canoe application. In this video, I'm going to show you about how to work with the diagnostic console. Uh, also, we will see in detail about each options present in the diagnostic console. So in my previous video, uh, we had seen about the uh, about how to configure the diagnostic ICTP to the configuration. Uh, if you have missed to see it, uh, please check on my YouTube channel. Uh, so that you can have a look onto it. Uh, before we go into the video, please hit the subscribe button to get notification on future series of videos. Okay, let's jump into the video. So let me show you about how to go to the diagnostic console panel first of all. Um, firstly, if you have already installed your Vector Keno application, so all you just need to do is go to the start option and then type Keno. Uh, you will find the Vector Keno application. All you have to do is just click onto it and then you will find this vector cano application opened and uh, you will see all the options like uh, home analysis simulation test diagnostics environment hardware tools and layouts so these are all the different types of tabs that you will find it in the vector cano application uh, now especially in this video we're going to focus more on the diagnostic console which will be present in the diagnostics tab uh, first of all <clears throat> go to this diagnostic tab and at the initial, you will not see all this diagnostic console or fault memory or, ses or session control. Uh, all these will be deactivated. Um, so in order to activate, uh, first of all, you you, sh you have to you should know about how to configure the diagnostic descriptive file into the Keno configuration, uh, which I had shown it in our previous video. So if you uh, if you missed it, please have a look into it. Please go to my YouTube channel and have a look onto that session. Uh, that will give a clear perspective about how this diagnostic description file can be added to the Keno configuration. So once if you have added and if you have applied it, then you will have all these uh, panels uh, will be activated and you will be able to see it. So now um, once if it is activated, just all you have to do is just click onto the drop down, you will find the diagnostic di console, click into it. And this is the panel that we are going to see it in this particular video. So this particular video is focused more about all the options that is present in the diagnostic console panel. So we will see one by one. Okay, first to start off with, what is the purpose of this diagnostic console? Uh, what is this panel? What what we are going to do here? Okay, um, the purpose of this panel is to mainly read and write data from and to the ECU. So when I say the ECU, it's the electronic control unit. So mainly to work with the UDS protocol, that is ISO 14229. If you haven't, if you're not aware of the UDS protocol and about the ISO 14229, I had made a specific video about it. So please go to my channel and have a look on to this UDS protocol video for more information. Okay, let us see what are all the options which are available in this panel and how it's going to be useful for us in our data writing and data reading in the ECU. So first of all, the first option that we could see it in the in this uh, diagnostic console panel is the tester present. So tester present on or off option is there available here. Um, as we had seen in our previous video, so many ECUs must receive such a request in order to remain in the extended diagnostic session or expanded diagnostic session. So that's the purpose why we have this. Uh, with this command, you can switch on or off the continuous sending of uh, tester present request. So tester present requests are sent periodically to the ECU. So tester present is a, is a message sent cyclically to maintain the communication with the ECU. So that is the purpose of this tester present. And this option is to enable or disable this tester present. The next option that we're going to see is about the, the uh, vehicle system group, v VSG we could say. The vehicle system group is nothing but the system groups of the ECU. So this vehicle system group are an alternative display of the available diagnostic services. So several system groups can be freely defined in the candela description file. When I say it as a candela description file, it's nothing but the .cdd file. So that is this option. And the third option is about display request history. Um, so in the normal case, uh, we will type in our diagnostic request to read and write in this request bar. When I say the request bar, I, I was mentioning about this request bar. So um, in a normal case, we will be typing in all our diagnostic 
read and write request here in this bar. But if you are going to more often going to use uh, some of the requests uh, that you, uh, I mean, um, if you are going to more often use the request repeatedly, then uh, you can make use of this option. So here you can view all the recently used diagnostic request stored as a history, which you can make use of it just by clicking on the preferred request. So that you will see it when you when you click onto this drop down, uh, you will find all the display uh, request history uh, present over here. And uh, especially uh, it will be useful when you are going to use uh, diag write request. So when you are when you are reading a when you are going to send a diag read request, it's all about you just need to send the twenty two surveys and then the di the, the DID itself. But when you are about to write some, uh, when you are going to send some of the diagnostic write request, that is where you are going to select the 2E followed by the diagnostic ID and followed by the data itself. So uh, data will not always be small, in some cases the data will be huge. Manually typing it, manually typing it and sending the request all the time, it will it will be difficult and it will be a time consuming when, when you type it manually every now and then. So uh, that's where uh, this option will be uh, quite handy so that you can always click onto this drop down and uh, you will find all the all your recent requests. So you just need to select it and then click on to the execute then uh, in that way you can make use of it. So we'll see on the next option. Next option is about initialize parameter. So uh, initialize parameter, so this command overrides the uh, current values of all the parameters of the write services with the current value from the controller. So controller when I meant it's about the ECU. Also note during the initialization phase, the values of all the parameters of the respective write services will be overwritten. So that is the purpose of this option. And then the next option is clear trace area. So when I said the trace area, it's nothing but this, this particular area. So this command will help you to clear the lower part of the diagnostic console. Lower part is this part uh, where you will find all the request and response information from the ECU. So that is the purpose. Uh, if you want to erase it when you're when you're overflown with all the data visible over here, and if you wanted to really clean up, so you can uh, click onto this uh, uh, clear trace area, and then everything will be cleaned up, and you can you're good to go with the new bunch of requests. So that is the purpose of this uh, um, clear trace area and the next one is activate trace locking so activate trace locking so this will allow you to save the trace locking so on uh, uh, whichever request that you wanted to save it for analysis or uh, or report uh, storing purpose for that uh, for that uh, use case you can use this uh, um, activate trace locking and the next option is activate the search as you all know search option is to search for something so here especially what what we are going to search uh, here this search option will be used to search for the diagnostic request or uh, uh, read request or write request or routing control or whatever it may be so but uh, if the, the purpose is that so here it's like a tree view now uh, it's been categorized in uh, all the diagnostic uh, request and response I mean uh, read read service and write service and routine control and sessions everything are being um, categorized and grouped and then you'll find a, a whole series of uh, diagnostics uh, information but if you wanted to really search for something so it's quite uh, um, uh, difficult if you go uh, one by one expanding all these tree views and then uh, to find the exact uh, diagnostic service that you want to uh, send it so in that, uh, in that case, you can make use of this activate search so that uh, once if you click it, you will find a search bar over here in the bottom, left bottom. And then you can type in your um, request and then you, you just need to um, uh, click enter uh, and then execute. So uh, in that way, it will be easy for you um, to easily search and send this request. So let us see the next option. So the next option is uh, create user defined message. So uh, uh, what is the purpose of this create user defined messages with this option you can create a user defined message as the name suggests it's a user defined message from the diagnostic request currently selected in the tree view so when i say about the tree view i meant about this one so here you can select any one of the service and then uh, you will see this particular option will be enabled and then click on to this particular uh, um, button like uh, create user defined message and then you can uh, you can rename it uh, like in whatever way that you wanted to uh, rename you can rename it and it gives another option called message cycle so uh, whether you wanted to send this particular uh, 
uh, request cyclically or you wanted to send it only, only for once. If you wanted to send it for only once, then uh, you have to select this one. It means that, um, so here we are not specifying any uh, periodic or cyclic duration. So it means that it will send only once. But if you wanted to send it in a specific period of time, then uh, you have all these options available. So 1, 5, 10, 20, 30 and 60 seconds. So if you select it based on which, uh, if you select and then if you click OK, then you will find this particular user defined uh, uh, message coming over here. And all you just need to do is just double click on it. And uh, since you have, uh, since we have configured it as a cyclic event, uh, it will send it at every defined period of time. <clears throat> Um, so that is the purpose of this uh, um, create user defined message and uh, the next option is about delete user defined message. So as you know uh, the way that we created uh, if, this, if this particular uh, user defined message is no longer required so in that case uh, you can delete it off or if you wanted to modify something on your user defined message if you wanted to change your uh, uh, interval or if you want to change the name then obviously you can go over here and you can edit it. So that is the purpose of this edit user defined message. And the next important part is start macro recording. Um, as the name, as you all know, what macro does is it will keep a track or it will keep a record of uh, what you do it. The, the steps that you're going to manually do it, it will record it. And then when you play it, it will play all the steps that you have already written it manually. So it will be done in a sequential way. Uh, as like it is recorded. So that is the purpose of the start macro recording. Um, <clears throat> so for example, if you have a part very particular sets of co sets or combinations of diagnostic request, so which you wanted to always uh, uh, use to write before the start of your test. So you have a specific test and uh, whenever you wanted to perform the test, you need to define some configuration or you need to do some sort of some sequence of uh, diagnostic request to write it and configure the issue. So if you have that kind of ki kind of an instance or a condition, then uh, you, you can better use this particular um, option called macro recording. Um, so here it will avoid, I mean, instead of writing these requests manually every now and then, you can use this record option and then you can replay it. So that is the uh, ultimate purpose of this uh, uh, macro recording option and uh, this is to start the macro recording so you have to click on it I mean if you wanted to record something you have to click it so that the recording will happen so all you have to do is you just need to one once at a one time you have to type in all your uh, sequence of uh, configurations like diagnostic requests and then you have to stop this recording and then it will ask you to store the recorded macro <coughs> so when you save it when you save it it will come over here under this macro session and whenever if you are in need to run this one before you, before the start of your actual test you can just double click on it it will it will run through uh, all the uh, sequence of diagnostic uh, requests uh, so that is the purpose of this macro recording okay so uh, that's all about the options that we could see it on the diagnostic console uh, now we go to the right extreme side you will find an offline uh, tab over here and this is like an online or offline uh, status indicator so the status indicator it, it's meant for the ecu status indication so like whether the ecu is online or offline if the ecu is online it's good uh, you're good to go for your diagnostic requests and for any communication analysis or uh, uh, debugging um, but when it is offline, uh, it, it indicates that your ECU is, uh, is, is offline, means it's not powered off, powered on, uh, or uh, it's it's uh, the communication uh, from uh, between the ECU and the canoe is broken. So always ensure that this is online. So whenever you perform any actions over here in the diagnostic console, and the next option is. We have a drop, drop down box, uh, it contains symbolic and raw values options. So symbolic, um, the response messages are displayed in symbolic form, symbolic form in the sense it's a readable format. Raw values as the name suggests the response values are uh, displayed in a raw value like a hexadecimal format. So it will not be so user defined uh, or easily uh, or, or in a simpler uh, view, so it will be like a, a hex view. So uh, that's about it. And uh, about the layout of this particular uh, diagnostic console, as you see in the left side, whatever you see, it is the um, tree view of all the diagnostic uh, services. So it's categorized. 
uh, based on your need and in the right side the the top the top section so it's it will show what is the what is your um, selected diagnostic uh, request uh, information and its data and so on and at the bottom um, section it it is the place where you will see all the uh, diagnostic request and response uh, informations are from the ECU uh, so that's that's about the panel and I hope so uh, it's we are done with this uh, diagnostic console um, hope you um, hope you have got the insight about the diagnostic console uh, panel in Kenu. Uh, in the next video we will see more in detail about the other panels like fault memory and uh, session control and so on and its purpose so if you like this video, please hit the like button. Uh, it will motivate me to make more uh, videos. And for more such videos, please also do click on the subscribe button uh, so that you will find, you will be notified on the upcoming videos. Um, if you are interested, please check on my YouTube channel for all the videos uh, of the Vector Canon tutorials. Thank you all. Uh, see you in another video.